Alright guys, this is Julia and I'm back with Cashmere Rolling Papers and today we have two special guests for you. We have THC, commonly known as Taking Hits Constantly. Guys, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Uh, pass the spliff, Liquid G, and we are Taking Hits Constantly. Perfect. And today, we're going to do a little bit something different from previous episodes. We're going to sit down, we're going to talk with the group, kind of get, the, get to know them a little bit more, and they'll have a chance to try out some of the Cashmere products. First off, how are you guys doing today? Doing fantastic. All right, we're excited to have you here. Okay. So, first off, guys, we're gonna ask you a couple of questions just so you can introduce yourself a little bit more to the people that you know don't know about what taking it constantly is and who they are. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. So, tell me, how did you guys meet? What is the story behind the both of you? Well, we go way back, way back. Legit. Uh, grade school friends. So uh, his dad was my fourth, fourth grade basketball coach. Yeah. That's all I remember. No way. So, yeah. Yeah. And you guys are both uh, Chicago folks? Uh, in the Burbs right now. In the Burbs. Yeah, yeah. Southwest suburbs. Okay, cool, cool. So how did the name THC come up? That's a great name, by the way. I gotta say myself. Right. Well, it, it started with like six people in the group, actually, and then it dwindled down to us two because we were the most talented. No disrespect <laughs> to anybody. But uh, it was the hazardous cannabis. It was a the couple hippie crew. Yeah, it was a couple different TACs and taking its constants one was stuck for sure. Yeah, we've been a big fan since the beginning of whiteboarding everything. So I remember being a ton of different names, but taking it constantly just seemed to go, right, that's the... <laughs> awesome, so from what I understand, you guys are in the hip hop group, the rap artists, is that kind of your genre of music that you tend to go to? Definitely. Let me ask you this, how did you end up, you know, liking and performing pop? I would say it started all with, well, my first CD when I was a kid was Cypress Hill. So I got introduced to it. But then once I became like a freshman in high school, I got more like Pink Floyd or Zeppelin. And then it was really seeing videos of Biggie Smalls freestyle. Mm. I was like, damn. And then we would start freestyling and then people would kind of like turn their heads, so. Yeah, we definitely uh, were, I was big on classical rock, definitely. Uh, and then my friend put me on Biggie Smalls and that was pretty much a wrap from that point on. Uh, big fan of Eminem too when I was younger. Definitely a big influence. Okay, yeah. I mean, um, does he does he still perform nowadays? I feel like he's kind of sort you of. You know, it's like that. Overseas. Eminem is just like there's there's no way I'd hate on him in an interview <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, I mean, he just destroyed MGK's career pretty much. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Eminem, awesome legend. Big fan of Redman too. So like those artists that kind of came out, they come out with that sound that's just. It's like it punches you in the face from the radio, you know? Like those artists for some reason. Biggie Small's one of them, Tupac. I mean, you know the legends. That's pretty much. Right. Definitely grew up on like East Coast 1990s hip hop, so that's what we try to emulate in our music. So, like when people say, well, what would you compare yourself to? We'd say like Method Man and Red Band. Okay. That's kind of the vibe we got. Interesting. Yeah. So, you mentioned in the beginning that you guys started off with six people. So now you're definitely down. What is your music making process? Or how has it been different having, you know, a group of people down to maybe two, three people? Well, me and him are really unique. Like, uh, I know a lot of artists, like, we'll hear a beat and we will write separately, completely away from each other. He writes at his house, I write at mine. Um, and we bring it together always, even though it's not the same, we're like very on the same wavelength, so the songs usually work together. But uh, I feel like we've always bounced very well off each other. Yes. That's good. It was like at parties, my friends would play beats on the pens, and there was like six of us rapping, and then it turned out like, well, these guys are actually rapping. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So. Okay. So um, just to quickly recap, how many years would you say you guys have been kind of a team? How many years have you been making music together? Ten, ten years plus. Ten years plus. Yeah. We released our first CD in 07. Uh, the last yeah. day we graduated high school, actually. Aging ourselves here. Yeah, we've been the, <laughs> the mark on it. Uh, 
but yeah, it's it's been a wild run, and it's awesome that the people we still have people who have supported us since day one. You know, people have. We used to do the grind where it was, you know, burning CDs out of like a multiple disc burner, and you know, seeing how much the games changed with the streaming and the marketing. It's just, it's been an awesome ride to see the industry where it's going, and it's also very exciting to know that there's so much room to evolve and be the next guys to do something big. That's good. So within your 10 plus years of, you know, making music, what would you say maybe your ultimate <clears throat> favorite memory? And I mean, it could be the same for you. It could be definitely different. But if yeah. you had to pick only one, what would be the one thing you'll pretty much not forget? Breaks is huge for us. Uh, volume one and two, which is our, how we got introduced to your product actually too, was uh, the Breaks volume two performing with the entire cast of Wu-Tang. We performed with a lot of our idols on the same show thanks to like music festival style venues. So it's like, I'll never forget the Breaks. Yeah, I gotta say, uh, we opened for uh, Pusha T, who's you know, a legend, one of the legends. And uh, it was crazy. When you're an opening artist, you don't exactly get at this point, you're not treated with like a lot of respect. You know, there's a lot of people in this genre, so uh, they kicked everyone out, even the people who were performing from the back. And it's this crazy moment where one of the guys came back and grabbed us and said, hey, you're cool to step back here. So we got to chill with like the whole team while Pusha was performing. And that, that moment was definitely something <coughs> that I'll never forget. In music yeah. Time. Where currently can fans see you perform? Uh, we perform downtown a lot. We perform at Sub C in Chicago a lot. Um, our buddy has some like residency there. So being independent, we could kind of hop on whatever shows we want. And if we, if if it draws our eye, then we'll definitely catch it. But if it's like a homey small show, like still do that too. And we're about to, you know, the festival circuit's coming up. Uh, that's always a fun uh, time to get on on those shows. You know, what I mean, uh, the festival scene, something that we've done even when we were. You know, in the midst of playing music, we loved going. You know, you always meet the best smokers at festivals. So, uh, but right now too, we're in the studio a lot. We're the album's dropping 420, so all the smokers grab that. I think the only show we have right now in the books for this summer right now is in Michigan. So, yeah, Michigan Peace Fest. Yeah. If you can pick your ultimate show to perform at, where would it be and why? I know that. I, I know. I just get to make it up. Yeah. I just get to make up my own ultimate show. I mean, no. Well, I know it's not on the list of questions. I kind of threw you in there, but you know, there's Spring Awakening, Lollapalooza, all these <coughs> events, all these right. like big music festivals. If you could pick one, where would you like to perform? I'd probably say uh, that one up in Minneapolis, Sunny. Rolling Loud's pretty badass. I think that's a pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> Rock the Bells used to be the yeah, show. Yeah, Lollapalooza is dope. I mean, shout out to Chicago for, you know. We, uh, crazy enough, we did security one time. We're the best security guards you could have ran into. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, I could actually see you guys as security guards. That's funny. I feel like yeah. we get that vibe off sometimes. I feel it's like weird. that too. Yeah, but then when people get the nose. It's good, it's good. It's, uh, abracadabra. <laughs> abracadabra. Um, so, music. Is that what you guys are doing full time? Do you guys have um, kids? Wow. Do you guys have any other job obligations? And if you do, how do you manage your music career with your life? Well, we're definitely entrepreneurs. Uh, I got no wife or kids. Uh, but like Kanye said, I'm trying to show them cars and cribs, right? That's the, that's the goal right now. Um, we actually just opened our own company and that's doing very well. Um, like last week yeah last week yeah. Uh, so that's been a, a real fun experience and then we also very heavily did the vending circuit so uh, besides just um, hip-hop music we were working with companies like uh, hopefully cashmere in the future uh, but you know drop shipping off our website for people and uh, you know getting we're, we're highly tied into this niche community of small peers and um, I feel like a lot of us have, sometimes so, that people put stoners in like a tacky category and I feel like it's moving towards classier stuff and uh, that's kind of what we've been marketing for a lot on our website, you know, just like the classier stoner. Okay. You know? No, totally. I can see it. It's okay. Absolutely. We had, to, we had to do something so we opened up our own company and now it's like when we're our own bosses so we called off today. Yeah, so. I mean, okay. staying busy. I mean, I tell yeah. any artist that's in this uh, multiple streams of income. 
people will tell you like if you don't make money in music it's a hobby but to be honest like in this day and age there's a lot of weird things that are going on in the scene where people pay to play shows but they'll you know they convince these artists to do it where so when someone's trying to get paid why would they pay someone when someone's willing to pay it it's a very confusing thing so artists have not put the value on themselves like it really is and that's now why it's become such a big marketing game and really once you get into that idea of you know uh, once you're big enough and you got the platform which is really i think that what we got in the music for is to get that platform well for example um, one thing we did was like we have a pop-up shop with all our merchandise on it we sell several various items that you find at like music festivals so we'll be at festivals that have like just EDM lineup, but we're there with our store, even though we're a hip hop, like entwining the community from hip hop to EDM. Saying that, we also have a song coming out with our new CD, Hope You're Offended, <laughs> with Prop <laughs> Cause, and Prop Cause is huge in the like EDM Chicago scene. It's full album going to be on Spotify, iTunes, all that. You can get all our information whenever you want it, takingthisconstantly.com. Everything's on there for free. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and then I do have one question that I just need to ask. So, what's the deal with the robot, guys? What's the deal with the robot? So, uh, my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> I have a roommate who uh, is an artist. He does all cool kinds of cool painting, and he had these robot heads. And we had got together and made a song called Robots on our uh, new album coming out here. And we were just kind of coming up with ideas. And we're like, man, it's really cool if we did something like almost cheesy, like 80s sci-fi movie robot heads. So that was like where the idea kind of sprang from. And then it fucking yeah, like basically caught on like wildfire. This, <laughs> like, like, people <laughs> really love the robot, I'll tell you that. Everyone wants to take pictures with this robot. He's, he break dances, he can moonwalk. He, and he loves the attention too, you know what I mean? The second song in the upcoming album, Hope You're Offended, is called Robots. So that's what it all is for. Cool. Make sure you stand out, and the number one way to do that is just be yourself. Because, you know, everyone is, there's only one of you. So that's why we're here now with y'all anyway. So I have a gift for you guys for coming out today. Okay. All right. So we have a pack of goodies for you. We got two party in the boxes, one for you and Damn. one for you. Why don't you show that? Look at this. This is awesome. What? This is dope. Oh my god, I'm gonna this go home and have dope. to smoke all my weed. <laughs> this is awesome. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I wanted to say thank you for coming out. You know, I know you guys are a little bit of a drive away, so just our way to say thank you. Well, yeah. thank you guys. Yeah. We're gonna drop some shit. Are you guys gonna drop some shit? Yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna run through some shit off okay. a little taste of taking this kind of scene. But here we go. We get show our craft off. Let's go in there. Okay. This is, this is some shit off that I'll come down, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pass the split with the G. <clears throat> Off the phone. Whoa, bro. I came here to party. I pop a pill called Strong Arm Morty. Every girl looking cute like a Cubo mask on a corgi. Shorty's butt cheeks fake. I'm a color four leaf. Y'all don't want war with the war chiefs. Y'all butane. I'm Luke Kane Turp Soup. Doctor Strange to the strength. Pussy water. I'm a war. Only one like for you. Let me tell you what I'm gonna do. Finish this, come back, have fun with you. Drink another clear mix with a ton of fruit. Spread the word I heard that they're coming through. This ain't nothing new. <laughs> no, this ain't nothing new. Probably done a hate on it. Drop way, got a gate on it. Lap, got a babe on it. Flow like water when I OD brought up. All my old friends, you don't owe me nada. See you at the gates with the holy father. See OD or you don't see pride. No time is more than right now. Roll up, it's time to light loud. Fuck runs, it's casual right now. Roll up, yo, it's like Mind in the free fall, gonna take a week off Palm trees in the beach fall through it with a B-long With a beat song, it's phenom, me no Well, I eat rhyming, no But I made by a boat with a truck to tow Who fucking knows? Uh -huh. What I stuck is gold, ain't nothing close Leave them up in smoke 
Reminisce when I couldn't afford tickets. Now it's cool side view with the best bitches. I used to shop to Jay. Now it's ballet, cause I bought my Jay's and I did bridges. And she said, I came early. It fell right on time, bro. She said, I see you switch my life up. I said, I can't change my mind. Smoke cashmere. Ooh, there's the robot piece. Hold right up, y'all. We're gonna give it to you one more time. Are you kidding me? You see this shit? <laughs> By show of hands, who's rolling the grams? Came here to dance, stop throwing that ass. She know that she bad. Go up the beach, go when I can. Smoke by the ocean with toes in the sand. Smoke for my IPA, open the can. Hope you a fan, loving your boy. The fuck with the noise, tonight Illinois, tomorrow Des Moines. Follow the rainbow, I come for the coin. Also, come with the point, life is short, we'll be fighting for All I need is a mic and cord, eat your style with a knife and fork You know that they like liquid, they say that I'm quite gifted Hey, look what that white kid did, if I want a mic, zip it You know what I like, different, all these rappers the same Hip-hop back from the grave, now wouldn't that be the day? Uh, this is the ass again <laughs> Yo, I'ma be real, for a sec I do not give a fuck. It's your opinion, don't believe in luck. I done seen enough, I done seen some stuff. Yeah. This bitch's pussy is Pizza Hut. She's selling a $10 box. It's tasting like Gold Corral. Yeah. I'm thinking I stick to her mouth. For real, for real, I pick up the bill. I'm fucking her rare, I'm fucking her raw. It's all about clothes, I'm ripping them off. All these haters talk. I talk, I'ma get paid. I'm thinking I might need a raise, I might need to raise the bar. I'm dropping these bars for any more records it made. Come on, crackers. Pick up the bass, you slothing. I dig it and cake, it's going to the face and not. This cracker ain't coughing. This new live resin, got a guy resin. Check my vision, that's 2020. That's Bernie Sanders. Burn your grams up, throw your hands up, you smoking cash, man. <laughs> that was, that was pretty hot, that move right there, too. Yeah, that was that hot signature. Well, yeah, there's yeah. a little sample. Just a that was that pretty long, guys. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty long. Long. But yeah, yeah, off the fall. So this has been really fun. I, I definitely, this is awesome. I've had a lot of fun, guys. This has been having my day. There you go. Yeah. Us, too. Us, too. You guys are the best. We love Cashmere. All right, cool. Thank you guys for joining us today. Stay tuned for next week, and definitely... I forgot what I was going to say. We'll cut that out. <laughs> it's all right. That's perfect. That's the best thing you can do. That's good. I could get used to this. This is for me. I could get used to this. This is for who? This is for you. This is for me. This is the dream. Drowning in pussy. Swimming in green. Somebody help me. I cannot breathe. This is for me. Nobody else. Before all that money, nobody else. You broke and you hungry, I know how you feel. Before all that money, you still got